Hi guys, Pete here in 6QW, and uh, we're finally getting around to working on the KWM1. We had a PTO that would not tune. It, it would create a signal, but it wouldn't, as you turn the knob, nothing would happen. And I found out what the problem was. There's a uh, tension bar that gets attached to the core, a tension tab, and it uh, some gorilla went past the stops and must have snapped it off. There's a uh, lead screw in there. It's grooved. It's in a spiral. So as you turn, it moves up and down the spiral. And uh, I, I figured out how they had to go together. And uh, the, um, <clears throat> the tension tab was originally soldered to a brass tube that's in the inside of, of the core. And you can look on my N6QW blog and you'll see some pictures. And it got snapped off, so it was two separate pieces. So there was no way that 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 little uh, core was moving up and down. I super glued it on there and I got it back together and I think we got it working. This only tunes 100 kilohertz. And you select 100 uh, kilohertz segments on this uh, selector switch here, so it's crystal associated with 100 kilohertz. This has two crystals on it for 20 meters. One goes from uh, 14 uh, dot uh, two to three, and another one from 14 dot two five to 14 three five. So at the time, it pretty much covered most of the 20 meter bit. Uh, the uh, filter is 3 kilohertz wide. There's a gear reduction uh, in the in the radio here so you don't tune the knob directly. And with a gear direction, you can just sneak up on the frequency. But it seems to be working. Very little drift. Pete here, N6QW. This uh, KWM1 is in pretty good shape. Actually, I bought a second one, a junker, and I've been uh, scavenging parts in that junker, and fortunately, some of the parts that I need uh, are, are in there, but someone didn't remove them before. Anyway, it looks like... Uh, the PTO that's in there uh, actually came out of the junker and I found it warbled and there's a little tab and this tab, the spring tab, actually makes contact with the uh, uh, with the core going in and out. Anybody ever have a Tentec, that was one of the problems. If you touch the knob, the frequency would shift. Not that you moved it, it's, it's the... Uh, and the cure for that was to take a piece of copper braid and wrap it around the uh, the shaft, and then to uh, screw that into the chassis. And once you did that, then getting near it wouldn't wouldn't make it uh, change frequency. And they've done essentially the same thing with some some hardware here. So kind of kind of cool how they've done it. The uh, core is really interesting. Check my blog n6qw.blogspot.com. Uh, 20 me uh, 15 meters CW was uh, kind of hot this morning. Yeah, a lot of CW stations are nothing on that now. Oh, there we go.
8 Q QM AQM 15 CW Hey, that's pretty cool. Wonder if there's anything on 10. Be kind of cool to put this on 17 meters. Fifteen. Boy, it's jumping. Nothing in the phone. Kind of cool. Pete here, N6QW, KWM1. This still has an interesting problem. Uh, it, it was dead for months and months and months, and I couldn't figure out what was wrong. And I, I accidentally touched something and shorted it to ground and it came to life. And there are four tubes that um, on receiver grounded and then on transmit are uh, uh, biased with uh, uh, negative voltage so it cuts them off. And uh, so one of the tubes, um, I think what I did is accidentally just shorted the, the bias and it came to life. But that, that's not it because I can't, I'm tracing the grounds here and even some of the tubes still have bias on them that shouldn't. So I'm still wrestling and the yes meter doesn't work. Although you can adjust the yes meter, zero it. So I know the meter's okay, but it's just it's not recording anything on there. So there's something wrong in the ABC and something wrong with the grounding in the relay. Here's, here's the grounding. It's a piece of wire to a relay and I got a, I took a relay out of the junker and I'm going to see if I can make that work and uh, just swap my exact part. I think that was FT8. Yeah, FT8, 15 meters. Hey, that'll be cool. Uh, I've got a digital adapter, so I can put this thing on an FT8 on 15 meters. Hey, possibilities. Well, a strong signal. One. One turn. Anyway, that's uh, normally what the norm. Yeah, it's a contest. Normally, the um, crystal complement would have uh, a 14.0 to 14.1 uh, crystal in there, um, but evidently the prior owner opted to get the full, full 150 kilohertz. So what might be cool is to actually try to find the right crystal uh, to put it on uh, 14 megahertz and then uh, just use the uh, either the 14.2 to 14.3 or 14.25 to 14.35 uh, crystal for the second position uh, so you could work FT8 on 20 meters so you know you can work FT8 on, on 15 because that works and we just got to get another crystal but I got to get a few other things fixed now I'm slowly but surely recapping everything I have quite a few changed out and uh, that seems to be going well anyway Pete here N6QW and, and the VFO is working oh I gotta wait
There you go, Pete here, N6QW.